Welcome to New Pallet Lanes in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. We are at the Pro Series Ultimate Ladder Tournament in the first round of match play. On lanes 7 and 8, you're looking at Ryan Lair, who is going to be bowling against Joe Cassio. On lanes 9 and 10, Richie Myrick will face Justin Scally. Both bowlers, Ryan Lair and Richie Myrick, start off with nine drops. Ryan Lair with a spare in the first box. And Richie Myrick doing the same. Ryan, as you can see, bowls out of Metro Bowl on, in uh, Peabody, Mass. Richie Myrick bowls out of Canal Lanes in Southampton, out in the western part of the state. And Richie is also a member of Crazy Train in the World Team Tournament a couple of weeks ago. Ryan Lair drops seven on the spare. He's looking at the one, three, and five. Richie Myrick with a five drop. He punches through the middle, leaving the two, three, four, six, seven. Big five lead. And a nice bid by Ryan Lair, but he's not quite able to get that five pin. So he'll be open in the second box, as will Richie Myrick. And Richie Myrick with a 10, giving him 25 after two. And Ryan Lair with a nine, he's got 26. And that's gonna bring up Joe Cassio bowling against Ryan Lair and Justin Scally on lane 10 bowling against Richie Myrick. Justin starts up with a seven drop, leaving the 247 with some wood out in front of the uh, two pin. Joe Cassio also drops seven, leaving the 247 with some wood that might help him. Piece of wood that needs to be removed, and I think that's Sean McKinley taking care of the wood. And neither guy able to uh, convert the 247. Justin will take a 10, and Joe Cassio will take an 8. Joe moves over to lane 7, and Justin goes to lane 9. Justin Scally bowls out of Park Place in the Sunday. Oh, there was a strike by Justin Scally. Let's have another look at that shot in slow motion. You will see that he hits high flush in the 1-3 pocket. And the 4-pin is the last to go. Nice ball by Justin. As I mentioned, he bowls out of Park Place. And I believe he also bowls out of Academy Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Richie Myrick back up on lane 10, bowling against Justin Scally. He drops six and leaves a four, seven, nine, ten with some wood that might be useful. And that's a great shot by Richie Myrick, converting that split. Let's have a, a peek at the replay you will see that he really just catches the right end of that wood that takes out the 4-7, and then the ball directs the other wood over into the 9-10. Great shot right there. Ryan Lair enjoys a 9-pin lead over Joe Cassio through 2, and he's back up on lane 8. Ryan with an 8 drop, leading, leaving the 3-7 uh, split. And Richie Myrick with a solid ball in the 1-2 pocket, but the seven, eight, and nine remain with a piece of wood that he might be able to use. But it's gonna be, don't know how he can really get all three of those. It's going to be difficult. And it's a nice try. He got the wood to come off the wall and take out the eight, nine, but nothing touched the seven. So he'll be open. 
And Ryan Lair is also open in the third. Leaving, uh, giving him 36 through three. Richie Myrick waiting to finish up his fourth box. Richie is a regular on the Western New England tour, as I'm sure you know, and has a number of wins on that tour. Uh, Richie Myrick has 51 through four. As Justin Scally comes back on lane 10, working on the strike that he put up on the board in the second frame, he drops seven as Ryan Lair makes a spare in the, uh, in the fourth. Yeah, and Justin Scally gets that spare to go in the third. You couldn't quite see it, but uh, the wood came off the wall and took out that four pin. That gives him 30 through two and actually 40 plus a ball in the third. And Justin puts seven on the spare, so he's got 47 through three. Joe Cassio with a pretty good chance at a spare and a third. And he's got it. I think that was the three nine. So it was maybe not quite as good a leave as I thought, but he punched that three straight back. That gives him 27 with a ball in the third. And Justin Scally with an eight. He's got 55 through four. So he has a four pin lead over Richie Myrick through four frames. And Joe Cassio kind of held on to that ball a little bit long and just got three. And he doesn't want to fall too far behind Ryan Lair with that uh, spare up in the fourth. Richie Myrick on lane 10 has the 1 2 10. And Joe Cassio with an 8, giving him 38 through 4. Richie Myrick with a nice bid on the 1 2 10, but he caught just a little bit too much of the head pin, and it went behind the 10 pin instead of taking it out. So he'll be open in the fifth. He's got a 10, he'll, he's got 61 through 5. Ryan Lair is working on that spare that he recorded in the fourth. And kind of a light head pin hit. But they keep going, and he's got nine. That gives him 55 through four and a 17 pin lead over Joe Cassio. He's got the 10 pin with some wood that's out front. It looks like he can probably push it back. But it's a little, there's at least two pieces of wood there, so it could be, uh, could be kind of tricky. Let's see what happens. And he manages to push it back into the 10 pin, so he's got a spare in the fifth. Richie Myrick will be open once again in the sixth. He'll have either 70 or 71, depending on, and he makes that 10 pin. So Richie has 71 through six. Justin Scally bowling against him with 55 through four. Justin with a chance to uh, do some damage here as Richie had a couple of open boxes. And Justin with a seven drop, leaving a three, six, seven split. Meanwhile, Ryan Lair with a strike on lane seven. Solid one three pocket hit. And Justin with a nice spare on lane 10. Let's have a look at the replay and see how this goes. He hits the left side of the three, and I think there's a piece of wood frozen behind it, which sort of gives it a little bit more mass and allows it to uh, deflect the ball over to get the seven. So that's a spare for Justin Scally in the fifth, giving him 65 plus the fill. And he drops eight, so he's got 73 and a 12 pin lead over Richie Myrick. Got the 710 with three or four pieces of wood there. He might be able to do something with that. And he does. Justin Scally converts the 710 for a spare in the sixth. 
That gives him 83 plus his fill ball when he gets back up there against Richie Meyer, who has 71 through 6. And Joe Cassio with an 8 box in the 5th, giving him 46. So, Ryan Lair has 75, which means that Joe Cassio is down by 29 here. So he's really got to get something together pretty quickly in order to get back in the match. These one-string matches don't give you a lot of time to uh, recover if you, if you get behind. You really have to just come out of the blocks fast and, and keep your foot on the gas. Richie Myrick with a 10 box in the seventh. And Joe Cassio threw a nice ball on the head pin, but left a split and wasn't able to convert it. He ends up with a six, giving him 52 through the six. So Ryan Lair with an opportunity to extend his lead here because he's got a strike to fill in the sixth. Richie Myrick on lane nine with a seven drop, leaving the three, five, six triangle. You might remember that Richie threw a four bagger in the uh, at the start of a, a, a Western New England Tour final match against Charlie Jutras a year or two ago. And Richie has a good record out there. Then he makes the spare in the eighth, giving him 91 plus the fill when he gets back up there. But of course, Justin Scally is also working on a spare and. Justin drops nine. So Justin Scally has 92 through six and he leads by 21 pins. He has the 10 pin with a, a piece of wood out there. Let's see if he can push it back. Kind of similar to the one that uh, Ryan Lair had a few boxes ago. And he's able to, uh, to make that spare. So Justin has 102 plus the fill in the seventh as he begins the eighth box on lane nine. Justin with a nice ball on the head pin, but a little, gets a little too much of it, punches out four for the spread eagle, gives him 106 through seven. That gives him a 25 pin lead. Although Richie Myrick does have that spare in the eighth, so it's not over yet, but Richie is really going to have to go in the last two boxes. Justin with a six, giving him 112. So that opens the door a little bit for Richie Myrick, as Richie is down by 21 minus the fill. Meanwhile, Ryan Lair has 111 through the eighth. And Richie only puts four on that spare. So that cuts it down to a 17 pin lead. And that means that he, he's got to have two marks in the last two. And of course, he's got a tough leave here. And he doesn't make it, leaving the 1 8. So probably he's got to throw a double in the tenth to have a. Now to force Justin Scally to mark. If he doesn't, then Justin just needs to fill out the two, the last two boxes with something reasonable. And Richie Myrick with a seven drop in the tenth, leaving the six, seven, ten with some couple pieces of wood that might he might be able to use and he does he converts that spare in the 10 so if he can put a really well let's see even if he put 10 on the spare it would still only give him 124 and there's a strike by Joe Cassio it's a little late but it's uh, a nice ball and we'll show you how it looks in slow motion in just a second Here's the strike by Joe Cassio. Look how much his ball breaks from left to right. And it 
he has kind of a medium sort of a mixer wall shot in the uh, in the eighth box but that gets 10 pins down pretty quickly in the eighth Justin Scally Richie Myrick finished with a 117 game so Justin Scally is going to move on to the next round in his ladder he's going to face Sean Baker next and Ryan Lair, it's pretty clear, is going to move on in his next match. And I believe his next opponent is Chris Cicchetti. We'll have coverage of those matches coming up a little bit later in the week. Ryan Lair with a nine box, giving him 120. And Justin Scally finishing up on lane nine. He finishes with an eight box. That gives him a 135 to 117 win over Richie Myrick. So Justin moves on to face Sean Baker. And meanwhile, Ryan Lair, he drops seven and the 10th. He has 120 through the 9th. Sean Baker begins to warm up on, lanes nine, on, on lane 10. To face Justin Scally. So Ryan Lair with one ball to finish up. And Ryan will take, it's going to be a nine. So that gives Ryan a 129 game. And Joe Cassio with 71 with a strike up in the, uh, in the eighth. So he's, uh, well, not mathematically eliminated, but he'd really have to have a massive finish in order to come back here. And Joe punches out the half Worcester left side. Punches the two and eight out of the rack. I might mention, and there's a nice shot by Joe Cassio. He converts the half Worcester for a spare. I might mention that uh, the cut in this tournament, we had a three round, a three string qualifying round, and the cut was very high. It was 392. So everybody who made it to match play obviously bowled pretty well in the, uh, the qualifying round. And Joe Cassio fills his spare with seven. That gives him 99 through the ninth, and he will just fill out the last frame.